Today's Quick Tip Tuesday is coming to you not via an email I received or a DM I received asking a question. This was coming in real life as I was working in the shop one day recently, restyling my space and decorating the front window, and a client came in and they were looking at the paint. They were wondering if they should paint their antique dresser. And it got our conversation started, but she was wondering, how do you know if you should paint your antique dresser or leave it be? Pass it down maybe to someone else. And that's what we're talking about today. It's Quick Tip Tuesday. You have questions, I have answers, and I am so glad to be answering them for you today. If you have a question that you want answered on the show, pop into my DMs on Instagram at Fig and Farm. Send me an email at figandfarmathome at gmail.com or join the Facebook group and ask there, bit.ly forward slash design 101 group. Let's hop to it. Let's answer your question. And if you find value in this, I'm sure someone else will too. So make sure you share with a friend. So you have Aunt Mildred's dresser sitting in your garage, or maybe it's taking up real estate in your dining room and you are looking at it, walking by it every day and you think, I'm not a fan, or maybe I am, but I'm, it's not really my style. Maybe I should paint it. I'm not sure. What if I ruin it? Does this conversation sound familiar to you? This is a question that I had from a client recently in the shop, and she was wondering what she should do with her antique dresser. Should she paint it or should she leave it be? It's not her style. She was able to show pictures of her newly constructed home and this antique dresser didn't fit. Now, when I took a peek at the, at the dresser, it did look lovely. I asked her if there was any blemishes, any scarring, any gouges, any defects that would make it so that it was unusable as is, that would just automatically be relegated to the paint or the sanding drawer. And she said no. And when I took a peek up close, it actually looked just fine. So how do you know if you should invest in painting it or sanding it down or leaving it be, letting someone else enjoy it in its splendor? I want you to start by asking yourself some questions. The first one is, is it truly yours to do with it what you want? It might have been a gift to you. It might be something that came to you with strings attached. Maybe your mom gave it to you and said, you know, Aunt Betty would have loved having you have this. And she would be so happy to know that it is sitting in your dining room right now. But don't do anything to it. And you're hearing mom's opinion about what Aunt Betty might or might not like. That's really hard. And what I do want to encourage you is if this is truly freely yours, it is truly freely your decision to make. But if there are strings attached, what I would say is if you are questioning whether or not to paint it, or leave it as is. If you hate it, I would say to the gift giver, would you like this back? Because right now it is not serving me and my family in the way that I want it to. It's not bringing me joy. And we all know that Aunt Betty would love it if it's bringing me joy, but it's not. So do you want it? And that might be enough to release that string that is being attached from the gift giver. If the gift giver wants it back, fantastic. You have answered your question and you can start thinking about bringing in a piece that really drew you in in the first place that you really love, that maybe it's a thrifted find and you're going to paint it anyway, but it's your choice and not given to you with a string attached right to the gift giver who just knows that you're going to be happier with it in the way that it is. Okay, so we've established that this is truly freely yours to do with it what you truly freely want to. I want you to ask yourself this question. Do you love it or do you hate it? Obviously, if you're asking if you should paint it, you probably don't love it. So we're going to go down that rabbit hole of you hate it. Is it something that if you learned how to style around it, you could marry new and old? Or is it something that feels like it's bringing down your room? Like every time you walk by, you want to just kick it. You might want to give it the finger. (laughs) You might want to just like accidentally, in air quotes, spill some nail polish on it and give you the reason to paint it. <laughs> it's just kind of making you mad, right? This this can happen. This This is something that truly, truly can happen. And if you have a relationship with a piece of furniture in your home that falls into the category of 
it's better off dead. Yes, this absolutely is a candidate for painting. Now, of course, we can go down the rabbit hole of learning how to style new and old, marrying new and old, having that that contrast and that compromise. I do have um, a blog post and I do have a podcast episode for how to do that. I'll link it in the show notes. I'll link both of those in the show notes in case you do think maybe there's potential, but I just don't know how to bring the two styles together. But every time you walk by this thing, you think, I, I just hate it. I hate it the way it is. Here's what I want to ask. If you hate it the way it is, and you are not willing to or able to learn to style around it, why are you keeping it? Of course, we can paint it, and that's the next option, but really, why are you keeping it? I want you to think about that. Do you like the bones of the piece? Do you like the way that the legs are tapered and they have spindles on them? Do you like the way that there's wheels on the bottom and that's just kind of cool character? Do you like the knobs? What is it about that piece that is still making it so that it is taking up valuable real estate within your home? If it's the character that you like, then yes, you can paint it and absolutely character can be emphasized when you paint that piece of furniture in your color story. If you look at the piece though, and you don't hate it so vehemently that it's making you plan its early demise, if you think it's fine as is, but you're just wondering if it is better off painted or not, this is where I want you to get your fine tooth comb out. Get out your magnifying glass, not really, but figuratively speaking, and I want you to think about the finish of the piece. How pristine is it? This could be a 50, 60, 70 plus year old piece of furniture, and it looks like it is brand new off showroom floor. It looks like it could have been taken care of so well by the caretaker before you, keeping it in its original state. The wood is pretty, the sheen is nice, there's no gouges, there's no scratches. It is just a really beautiful piece of furniture. This is where I would pause and I would say, let's see if we can learn to style old and new first before touching it with paint, before sanding it down. But if it's not in pristine condition, if it looks like it has had a story and it has had a life and it has had a kind of a rough existence before you, maybe some of the veneer is coming off. Maybe there are water rings on the top of it. Maybe there are gouges and scratches and missing parts that make it slide really well. The drawers slide really well, or it just is looking like a tired version of itself. It's looking like it is ready for retirement and it should probably have been there about 10 years ago. If that's the case, then generally those pieces are the ones that are best to paint. Sometimes you know, you have the option of sanding them down and restaining them. But sometimes if they have deep gouges, they have deep scarring, even if they have water rings that you can't get out, those sometimes do not become candidates for sanding and restaining. They become candidates solely for leaving as is, dumping or painting. Now, you already know my stance. If you've been around for a while, you know my stance on dumping furniture. I think it is a shame unless it is completely broken. I do think that there is value in repurposing, reusing, and restoring old pieces of furniture to get second life out of it. What looks like it could have been so beautiful in someone's home 80 years ago, that's great 80 years ago, but right now it might just need to have upkeep. It might just need a, a makeover. It might just need an updo. It just might need a little bit of TLC that can bring it into the modern century and bring it into a new version of itself. It's like a second chapter. What an honor it would be to carry on its legacy by doing it that way, by saving it from the dump, saving it from the hatred that you have for it the way that it is and letting it breathe new life in a new version of itself. That is such an honor. Okay, so we've talked about what to do if the piece is pristine, pristine. We've talked about what to do if it is not pristine. And we've also talked about what to do if it's not freely yours to make a decision about. But what happens if it looks like it is in pretty good shape as is, but you just don't like the finish of it? You just don't like the color of wood. You don't like the stain that it has on it. You don't like the finish of it, but it looks like it's in pretty good shape. Now, this is exactly the situation that 
my client was having the other day, she was come, when she came into the shop, this is the situation she was in. It was fine. It had some really fun character. She could maybe see it still as being useful. She just did not like the way that it was finished, but it was fine. Okay. This is where, honestly, if this is truly yours to say, I get to make the decision of, this is yours to make the decision of. You get to choose. Would you rather, would you feel, would you feel a burden of painting a nice piece of wood? Now, this is a place where a lot of people land, a lot of people land. If you are actually even considering painting it, you probably don't land in that, in that space. But I guarantee you, if you ask this opinion of your whole family, you are going to have people on one side of the fence or the other. There are very rarely people who sit on the fence of, mm, I don't know if I like painted wood or not. It is generally a very strong opinion one way or another. Now, this isn't necessarily true. I'm grossly generalizing, but generally speaking, the older generations prefer having wood that stays wood. And there's a reason for that. There's some heritage in it. There's some, you can even think about the way that things have been made years ago when they were growing up and compared to now when the quality is just not the same. So why would you ruin a piece of wood? That, that is me quoting them, not me saying that. <laughs> but here is where I want to say, does this piece again bring you joy? Does it right now in the way that it's finished bring you joy? If you don't like the way that it is, why would you not either release it to someone who will appreciate it the way that it is or do something about it? But keeping it in that middle ground, keeping it in your home space in the way that it's just, it just kind of makes you grumpy. Don't do it. Don't do it. You have so much more space inside of your mind and your heart to be thinking about other things than the way that a piece of furniture makes you feel in your space. So if you would feel badly about painting a piece of nice wood furniture, even though you don't really like it, get rid of it. Bless it, release it, and say, I bless you to, to go live with someone else in the way that they want to take care of you. But if you feel okay about painting it, why not? why not do it? If you know that it is going to bring you joy in that pop of blue, in that pop of green, in that color red, what, whatever it is going to be, why not? It is a nice piece of furniture and it is, you can appreciate the crafts, craftsmanship, you can appreciate the style, you can appreciate the labor that went into it, the story that it had before you. You can still appreciate it even though it has on new clothes. You can still appreciate it. Now, one thing I would want to say is this, what is the worst that can happen? You're not taking a chainsaw to it. You're not taking a hammer to it. You're not taking nails to it. You are painting it. So what happens if you don't like it? What happens if you don't like the way, the quality of the paint job that you did? What is the worst that can happen? I already know the answer to that and you probably do too. It just means a little bit more work. It just means you might have to sand it down. You might have to sand it down again, start all over, and you might really love it once it's sanded down. Now, here is a cautionary warning. If the piece that you're trying to consider whether or not it should be painted or not, think about how much detail there is in the curvature in the lines of your piece. The more curvature, the harder it's going to be to sand down if you don't like it. So do keep that in mind. But is it doable? Absolutely. Is it going to take some elbow grease if you don't like it? Absolutely. But it's worth it. And it's definitely worth the risk. So you have several options to consider. You have several questions to ask yourself. And whatever decision you make is going to be the right one for you. As long as you're making it with you and your family and the way that that piece of furniture is serving your family. As long as you have that in your mind, it's going to be a good choice. All right, if you're ready for that next step and you are wanting to take a risk on painting that piece of furniture, I want you to go grab my paint class. You can find it at bit.ly forward slash painting furniture 101. It is a step-by-step -step guide for how to chalk paint furniture in a way that brings your tired piece back to life so that it can tell a brand new story living its second life, second chapter in your home 
bringing you joy. So if you want to learn how to chalk paint furniture, I do encourage you to go grab that class and make sure that you pop into my Facebook group because that is where you can get support along the way. Because I don't want you to just paint the furniture. I don't want you to be left stuck. If you have questions, I want to be able to guide you along that journey so that you can get unstuck. I want to be holding your hand along the way and I want to see what it looks like before and after. That is always inspiring. And before we go, if you have a question that you want featured on the show, make sure you pop in to my email, my DMs, or the Facebook group to ask. Because chances are, if you have that question, someone else does too. So I want to hear from you. And until next time, I'll see you soon.